Hey guys, how's it going? This is going to be the start of a new series called Data Tools. And in this show, we're basically going to talk all about tools for data science. Hopefully, I'm going to talk about some more unknown ones, some tools that may be under the radar specifically for people learning data science and at the beginning of their careers. And hopefully, we shed some light on some brand new tools that have just been released, some tools that may um, not be so popular and well known. So in this series, we're going to start with uh, one of my favorites, Notion. I had talked a little bit about Notion before, but Notion in particular is a beautiful data tool because it uses relational databases and in that in itself is a powerful data tool, but it could do more than that. You can also store all kinds of media, whether it's code, whether it's photos, whether it's videos, voice, all of it in one place and just have it all on one page, however you want it displayed. And that makes for a great tool for working with data or graphs, visualizations, and and all sorts of things. The one thing that it doesn't do is it won't handle large data well, but you wouldn't be putting large data in a place where you are doing your work anyways. This is Notion serves as a good uh, midpoint for your thoughts and then your actual coding. You can put code snippets into Notion, but I wouldn't go as far as full out programming things and running things on Notion. That's not what it was intended to do at all. But I hope in this video you see a little bit of how I use Notion to learn data science and maybe how you can use different templates to do different things um, for data science and machine learning all within Notion. So let me know if you guys have any data science templates below and I would love to share mine and the ones I create later on. For now, the main template I use is one for learning and storing my to-do list, my calendar for my courses, and my sources I find on data science. So I'll talk about this and much more in this video, so stay tuned till the end. Let me show you how I use Notion for learning data science in six months. So right now I have the page open in Notion. And the first thing I have is my mission statement. So my mission statement is, my mission is to learn Python with economics, to get my foot in the door with smart people at a food startup, then work privately on my own stuff on the side. And the moonshot is to work on greenhouse stuff for Mars. So now that that's just my personal goal, you can put whatever you want, but seeing this every day actually like reminds me of you know why I'm doing so much work you know, when you have a mission like this, you know, you're going for the long term goal. And then immediately I have my programming calendar. In the calendar, I have what I'm going to do for the day. Usually, I just do it daily. So I don't have anything for today. But if we go back to, I don't know, July 1st, which is Wednesday, we have Khan Academy stats, and then I have a little done button. So that's, that's how I know I did it. Um, and then let's go to another day. Let's go Monday, July 6th. I have Think Stats Chapter 2 and Khan Academy Stats. So, you know, we're doing a lot of stat stuff, like I'd mentioned. And then, I don't know, let's say July 8th. All right, well, we have Think Stats Chapter 3 and more stats. So you get the point. I I don't know what else to show here. Um, I do have back in, let's say, July 27. I have Think Complexity, which is my next book. So I have that already set up, but I don't have the chapters laid out or anything. I'll lay that out when the time comes. Then I have a little place to jot down some notes. Here I got, you know, use the toggle app to track coding hours. Right now I'm averaging three hours, try to get to four hours. So, you know, I think I should make a video on this and how I track my time because not only am I, you know, have this YouTube channel to kind of track my time and what I do every week, but 
I want to know how many hours it actually takes in within six months to learn data science to better help people understand the time commitment that they're getting into. Because, you know, six months, does that mean you're working 24 hours, you know, 24 seven? Or does that mean you're only working four hours a day? Now, in my example right here, you can see that I'm only working three hours and I'm trying to get it to four hours daily. So it's not that much time, but it's focused work. And I have a little bit more of notes on, you know, what I want to do with my life and a little example here of coding thing that I should remember. Then I have some quotes here. So you have, you need to know more programming than the average mathematician and more math than the average programmer. So that's a little data science quote for you. I keep that there. Next, I have all my sources. So basically, this is my courses. And I have here, for example, Coursera, Udemy, Books, Reddit. Um, what's in the Reddit thing? Ah, so in the Reddit uh, page, right? So this is a page within a page. In the Reddit page, I have a little note of all the Reddits I use for information. Now, I should really make these links. So I should just click on them. But Right now I have you know, deep learning, TensorFlow, learn Python, statistics, machine learning, you know, that kind of things. And then if I go back one, we can also go to books, which is what you guys are here for today, because this week I lived in this book section. And so here I have, so this is a, this is a database that links to another database. Now, Notion is all about relational databases and if you don't know what that means put it really simply you can have a database and fill it up with things from another database and depending on how you move things it will all move together the right way so really in this example this is just a database that i copied over so it's a copy of a database but whatever i do to this database also affects the other database so they're not independent copies they're just you know, almost duplicate. And here I have all the books and I have what site they're in. Oh, I'm sorry. This is actually messed up. If I go on the books, here we go. That's how it should be. In the books, uh, a filter, basically, I only see the stuff from the database that's a book. So that's why I made a copy. So I can just have them be books and I don't have to see everything else. And here at the bottom, as you can see, I have Think Stats second edition. It's a book, and I'm currently working on that. So let's go into that. So you can see how I take my notes. So here I have the site, which is just a book. Description empty, link empty, must do because it's a book that I had thought of before. The book that I should definitely do while I'm studying. And then I have the tags, and so here basically I have the the almost like note taking template that I made when I make a new book it automatically comes with this template which is a really cool thing that notion has and it's basically two big sections what is the book about then I have the sections on notes and each little arrow you see opens up I, I'll show you right now and then I have on the bottom though I have what you got out of the book so that's kind of going to be like the summary of what I learned and what the book was actually useful for so I can always know what the book's really what I really got out of the book and which chapter I should open so here I have chapter one chapter two chapter three chapter four so I did chapter three and chapter four and not chapter five so if we go into chapter three probability mass functions as, as I talked about it was about probabilities and here I have bisection everything I learned in the books, my notes. And I also took little images and I put them in Notion since Notion accepts almost any form of media. Put that there. Now, this is cool. Right here, we have a section where I have Python code. So in the section, I put the code that I was learning and I typed it out for my notes. And it also allows me to do easy copy paste into any IDE. But really, this is just a good way to separate the code from text. It just looks really nice and clean. You can set it to any language and it recognizes it. 3.3 visualizations. And you know, and we have all this. I keep scrolling down. Oh, here's a beautiful example of 
a graph that actually shows what's going on. You can see in the beginning on the left side of the graph, we have way more actual percentage than we have observed. So um, basically people expect their classes to be of a larger size and we can see that towards the right when the observed percentage goes larger than the actual. So people think that the people in their class, the amount of people in their class is much larger than they actually is. And this is a cool uh, way to show that. And that's what we were learning about. And yeah, that's kind of it. And then I have the glossary and then I can close all of that like this, if we scroll all the way up and now it's gone. All the notes are gone. So now I have this clean page with just the chapters I've done. And that I find really simplifies going through my notes. Before I would have like, you know, a booklet where I would flip through the pages of notes and it would just be a mess with Notion. I have all of it here. And if we go backwards, <laughs> we can go on the top, you can see where in the pages I am. So I'm in ThinkStats 2E on the very top left, and then I can go back to all the courses, and then I can go back to teaching myself coding. So now I'm back at basically my home page, which is just amazing that I can just go so deep, but all the way back in just a couple simple clicks and have it all clean in the book section of sources. Next, I have more sources, but this is more just like notes on things I could look at. So I have, for example, data science sources, if I click on that. Oh yeah, it's just a bunch of links on stuff I found interesting, but I don't want to look at that right now. So I'm out of that. Next, I have my classes. So I have the lesson plan overview in the beginning, and that's how I remember kind of like the map that's the map made by another youtuber that i'll link below i forgot their name but they do data science and they have this great list of of things you should learn and and kind of in order too so that's kind of what i look at to create my 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 class like my class schedule right and so here i have it though my class schedule in to do's now this is what i love when when you're learning a new topic and you, you just keep learning every day you kind of forget how far you've come and you're only really thinking about you know what you have to do next but in this layout because i have them as a to-do list and i have the whole list this isn't just a to-do list that i throw away daily it's always here so even when i come back a year from now i'm gonna see this checklist of everything complete and now that's that's the idea that I'm going for. So here I can see that Think Python, which was a beginner Python book, is done. Math review from Khan Academy, you know, like we had talked about, had started from the beginning, also done. So that's great. Now I'm on thinking stats. So that's the next thing in my list. And I just can't wait to finish the whole list. Now it's not done, but I'm pretty sure that by the time of this, uh, I finished the natural language processing book, I'll be uh, firmly into data science territory. So let's see if we can get through all of this in six months. Now, I have a lot of c cool ideas of what to work on in between things. Like th I have to think stats, and then I have an example of how I should go to this data camp class and just do a project there. And then I have small projects that I can do in data science that are on GitHub. So I link those and I really like testing my knowledge on a project after I did it. So I was going to talk about that in the future, not right now, but that's just a little bit of incoming uh, stuff for the channel. So next is my idea that I will do a little bit of a project and then I'll move on to Intro to Statistical Learning book. So that's next. And then I have Think Complexity, which is the other next option I have. So that's basically all I have. I think if I scroll down, oh yeah, down here, 
I have a list of coding ideas um, to do, just projects, and then at the bottom I have just links and links and links and links of things I thought interesting but haven't made it to be um, sorted yet. And it's also a great idea to just collect things you find interesting and leave them alone. See if you find them again because if you don't, then were they really that interesting? Um, it's a great way to save time reading over a lot of things. You just gather all the things you want to read and then see if you actually, actually ever go through and read them. See how important they really are. But I try to keep this page as clean as possible for my learning. It is purely for learning data science and I try to keep it orderly and scheduled um, especially using this calendar for as my to-do list and it also serves as a reminder of how much knowledge or how much time I've actually spent into this project and it's kind of cool so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time uh, hopefully with a little bit of how I use IPython notebooks or Jupyter notebooks we'll see all right so basically that's it I showed you guys my workflow through Notion. If you guys have any cool Notion templates that you'd like to share, please share them below. Or if you've you know, never had a system for learning data science and you wanted to find a good system, I, I think Notion could be a great tool for you. It's been a great tool for me and many other people. And so I hope you enjoyed this content and as always I'll see you next week for the next iteration of learning data science in six months.